speak about today is um, more or less the personality of Elkanah, the husband of Chana. And if last time we spoke about what he did and what his uh, objectives and the change changes he made in the whole concept of the Jewish people and their relationship to the Beis HaMikdosh, to the Mishkan, after um, the period of the Shoftim. Today, I'm going to speak about Elkanah as a husband, as a person. Once we've spoken about Elkanah, then we'll go to his other wife, Nina, and then we'll go to speak to Chana. Okay, but each one's got a different personality and each one's diff got a different... Yeah outlook and uh, story in this uh, book of Shmuel. So now we're going to start off reading by the first sentences. Ayhi um, Ishechad, I number five. Sorry, one minute. Share screen. Sorry. Mina Ramatayim Tzofim Ihar Ephraim. There was a man from Ramataim Tzofim, we spoke about it last time, Ushmo Elkana, and his name was Elkana, Ben Yurucham, Ben Eliu, Ben Tohu, Ben Tuv, Efrati, he was a Levi. And he had two wives. Achat Chana, Shema Shinit Pnina, Vahili Pnina Yeladim, Ula Chana En Yeladim. And Pnina had children, and Chana did not have. He Hayom, the day came, Vahizbach Elkana, and Elkanah made an offering, and he gave to his, his wife, sons and daughters, part of it. And Elkanah, he gave one, one mana apayim. Now, the word apayim is complicated. It's usually translated twice the amount. Et chana ahev. Chana he loved. Hashem sagar achma. And Hashem closed up her womb. The second wife made her angry. And made her even more upset. Why? Again, this is what he used to do every day, every year. Hashem going up to Hashem. Nina used to make her upset. But if Chana cried, and she never wanted to eat it. Her husband said, Why are you crying? Why aren't you eating? Why are you so upset? I'm better than 10 children. Now, this is the introduction. Here I want to look at the way the sentences are made up. Please take note, first of all, of the communication which takes place between Elkanah and Chana. And how the description is Elkanah Shah, Elkanah has a husband. Or you take the second one, or you take in the sentence before that, where it says in Sentence number five, Sukhamesh, line number ten. Yet Chana Ahev. He loved Chana. Some special communication which takes place between Elkana and Chana. Now, before that, there's even a greater depth in this. Let's look at sentence Sukbet, line number seven. The law, Shtein Ashim. Shame Chat Chana. Shame Hashinit Pina. Now, very interesting. It's not written Shame Haachat Chana. If you look at it, there's no definite article, the hey, before Chana. And one of the great Mephoshi in the Chida asks that question. Yeshle Dakdek. Gabe Pnina Tiv Natan the Chana 
Sorry, that's quite, sorry, that's one question. Shem achat chana. It doesn't say shem ha'acha. If you look at the sentence number five, it's written, Lechana yiten. Pnana, it's written, the pasuk before that, Venatan lipina. One is written in the past tense with a vav conversive. In chana, it's written, will give constantly. Vod lipnina tiv ishto. Pnina, it's written, his wife. Lechana asher ahev. And chana, who he loved, it's not written. These are beautiful, brilliant insight into the depths of the sentences. What are the questions which is asked? Why, which we've asked, why isn't it written the definite article before the word chat in Pasuk Bet? Why is it written v'natan lipina chana yiten? Why is it written nina ishto? And Chana Ahev. It's not written Chana, his wife. Now, one of the great commentators who we spoke about mentioned last week has a wonderful, wonderful insight into the first question which we asked why is there no definite article? And he says the following it's written in the Torah concerning the Korbanot. The same thing. The first one, there's no definite article. The second one, there is a definite article. And says the Ktava Kabbalah, somebody we mentioned two weeks ago. It's written, Hakeves, the Keves. Lama Neemar Echad. Echad ha miyuchad shebeedro. The special one. Ha-kavana. Al shem katuv bilshono. Lomar ha-keves hei. Echad lo hei. Take note, et ha-keves ha-echad. No, it's not written et ha-keves ha-echad. It's written et ha-keves echad. Without the definite article before the word echad. should have said Shem ha'echad el dad, shem ha'sheni mei dad, shem ha'achat shifra, shem ha'sheni u'a. Amar sham achat b'lohei, b'rosh l'chalek ha'itztarfut sheb'neem, u'lehorot shehi ha'ita ha'chashuva u'miuchedet b'nashav. It's not written shame ha'achat, shame hasheni. What's it written? Shame achat. There's only one in his life. In Elkanah's life, there was only one woman. That was Chana. When it's written et keves echad, there's only one special keves. There's only one special person in Elkanah's life. And that is Chana. And that's why if we go back, we will see how the sentences actually say such a thing. There was one special one who was called Chana. And then there was the other one, Nina. Carry on. Epnana's wife. It's written Venatan. Lechana Yiten was constant, constant giving. It never ended. Giving never ended. It was constant. It wasn't one Khad Ami. It wasn't when he went up there, he gave. 
was constant. The connection between Elkanah and Hana was constant, constant giving. Why is it constant giving? He et Hana Ahev. He loved Hana. In the world of Elkanah, in the world of Elkanah, there was only one wife, Hana. She was the special one. She was the one who was above everybody else in this family. And that's why the introduction Shmuel wants to teach us this. Shmuel, in his, in his perspective, teaches us what he felt the connection was between his father and his mother. Now, let's go one step further. If Hana was his special, special wife, what happened? The Midrash comes along and tells us that the following. The Midrash says, what happened here? Sorry, one minute. The Midrash says in line number 30, Amar Rav Yona, Shem Rabbi Chama, Kivan Shira'ata Chana, Shelo Yalda, Chana saw she never gave birth. Amra, Omar Lo, I will tell him, Sheachnis Tarati Betoch Beiti, let Elkana marry another woman. I don't want to take away, says Chana, the privilege of my husband who loves me so much having children. Mitochkach, with this in hope, Yirah Kadosh Baruch Hu Mifkodoti. Perhaps Kadosh Baruch Hu will see my chesed and he will remember me. Ma'ala Kadosh Baruch Hu, Kadosh Baruch Hu says to her, Chana, You've given me a deposit of souls. Hashem said to me, you've given, created in this world, your chesed created new souls in this world. By your life, I swear, I swear, eventually, she gave so pregnant, but tailored, Shoshabanim, Ushdebanot. At the end of the day, she had five children. This relationship between Hana and El Kana, where Hana felt there was constant giving, allowed her to do such a thing, allowed her to give El Kana the privilege of having children. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a comparison between another person who was in the same situation, exactly the same situation. Who was that? Sentence 35, Yaakov. Yehav, Yaakov, Rachel. The same way as it's written, Elkanah loves Rachel. So it's written at the beginning, Yehav Yaakov Rachel. Right. Now, therefore, we have two people in the same situation. Obviously, there are differences. There are differences which we will have to analyze in when we want to analyze the personality of El Kana. Now, let's go back to the sentence. Let's go back to the beginning. Lie, sentence number <coughs> sentence suk dalad ayahi hayom and there was the day baizbach elkana elkana decides to send up take offerings to shilo natanli pnina ishto lechol baneh uvnote amanot he gives pnina or manot the chana yiten mana achat apayim he gives chana Double amount, or whatever the word apai means, it chana hev. Hashem sagarachma. Let's look at the radak, how he explains. 
sentence. Line number 40. Vayi hayom, yom mo'ed. It doesn't written vayi yom. It is vayi hayom. It was a special day. Ve, bidrash Rabbi Shua ben Levi omer, ze yom asher atzeret. It was Shavuos time. Shavuos time, he goes up. Shmuel goes to Shiloh. Hayom. Natan li pnina. And he gives Pnina Mina Shlamim Shaya Zoveach. Ulechana Yiten Monatan Moazi Bane Yoshua Aziavdil Moshe. Mana Achat Apayim. Mana Achat says the Radak. Mana Achat Nichbedet. Gives her a very big portion. What's the word Apayim? Ashiv Apa. In order that she shouldn't feel angry. Kaasa. Etc. Adoni Avi, line number 47, says, Perush Apayim Kaas. Kaas what does that mean? When Elkanah gave Chana the portions, Chana Elkanah was upset. He was sad. He couldn't give it the Simcha. He didn't want to make Chana feel bad, but he deep down was a sad person. He felt Chana's pain. Lefi says the Rada, Lefi Shaya Ahe Oev Chana, Vaya mit Aveliotlo, Mimena Banim. El Chana feels the Chana. He feels what she feels. He empathizes with her. It's this special communication, spiritual communication, which takes place between El Chana and his wife. And that's the word Apayim. There are two angers here. He gave a mana achat with where anger was, was there. What was the anger? It was Chana who was angry. There was Elkanah who was angry. Both hid the angers. But deep down, they were sad people. Elkanah had already children from Nina. But Chana, who he loved, he constantly gave. There was a certain amount of anger. And then what happens is the following. There's the al -Sheikh. Brilliant explanation. How did Chana come along and pray? She wasn't, she wasn't beginning, she wasn't thinking of davening. In a way, she felt comforted. Her husband loves her. Even though the fact that what? That he gave Pnina and the children food. And he gave them certain amount. Half the amount of the food he gave to Chana. The other half he gave to Pnina and all the children. She got a third. Chana kept a third. Pnina and the children had a third. Now, what happens? Nina teases her, pushes her, presses her, and drives her up the wall. Elkanah never ever says anything, just the opposite. But Nina caused tension in the family. 
And that's what happens. Therefore, because Nina creates the tension in the family, were it not for Nina, Elkanah and Chana would have given up to their lot. Would have created a family somehow, somewhere. Nina pushes them. Now comes the final push. This is what happens every single year. Nina makes her angry. And eventually, Chana cries. She can't eat. Again, we have the same expression. Okay? Her husband. Not Bala Isha. Chana. Lama Tifki. Lama Lotochli. Lama Yera Levavech. Loch Nochi Tovlach Miasarabani. Let's take the concept of Isha. Husband. Says Hoshea. Aya Bayomahu. Um Hashem. Hashem says in the future. The connections between Am Yisrael and Akadosh Baruch Hu would be that which is called Ishi. Two concepts, two relationships exist. Isha, Ish and Isha, or Isha and Baala. Says Hoshea, Kodesh Baruch Hu is going to relate to Am Yisrael as Ishi, but not Baali. Let's learn Rashi. Ishi, Avduni me'ahava, lo mi'ira. Ishi, the shon ishut, personal relationships. Chibat nu'urim, love of youth. Loti krili, Baali, the shon adnut. Like an ownership, umora and fear. Rabotainu pirshuk kechala bevet chamir velo kechala bevet avia. That will leave out. Says Rab Shin Shafail Hirsh. Ish veisha mevate et yachas hashivyon equality. Right, number one. Shirak, we're jumping over the um, what's it called? Line number seventy-five. You'll understand Don't look at yourselves. Being humbled, nishpelet, and lowered down if Hashem. Walk upright or Pnei Hamelech. So the concept of Isha means equality, connection. Baal is something lower. That's why in the Torah we never use, find the expression Baal. Baal is always like an owner. And it speaks Abotai to Chana. Now let's look at this sentence. What does it say? Elkana says, Isha, her husband, she felt, she felt, look at this, her husband, and Elkana speaks to her, she feels equal to him. She feels connected to him. He feels connected to her. And that's why he says to her, Lama tifki, why will you cry? Lama lotochli, and why don't you want to eat? Lama yera levavech, why does your heart feel so bad? Right? Sorry. Lo anachitov me asarabanim. 
better than tell children and children. Let's look at Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu says the following. Baterek Rachel. Rachel C. Line number 80. Ilo Yaldali Yaakov. She never had children. Vetekane Rachel Ba'achotah. Rachel gets angry, gets jealous of her sister. Tomer Yaakov. Chana, you never feel that. Chana, you never feel any jealousy. Chana, you never feel any competition. All she is, is she davens to Hashem. Okay? What does Yaakov say? Yaakov, Yaakov, Rachel. Yaakov gets angry with Rachel. Yomer. My instead of God, who stopped you from having children. Let's take these two reactions. Yaakov says, I'm instead of God, what can I do about it? How does Elkanah react? What does Elkanah say to her? He says to her, I'm better than 10 kids. I'm not blaming HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Let's look at our relationship. Our relationship is one of ish the isha, equality, constant giving. If that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants, I'll make up your 10 children. I'm making it up already. Let's look how Rashi explains these sentences. Rashi says the following, line number 89. I love you more than all the ten children. I love you more than all the ten children that Pnina gave me. I still love you more. Let's look at the Malbim. There's the Malbim on the next page. Shepam Achad Ratsa Elkanah Lenachama. Elkanah wanted a comforter. Ayan, and he answered, Re'emi mena, ra'ami mena shlosha dvarim. Shebachta. She was crying. Rechein Amar, lama tifti. Lo tochel. Lama lo tochli. I'm kaas. Leze Amar. Lama yere levavech. Amar eleha. Alo sibat. Aram Hazer, all your depression, all your bad feelings, you're constant feelings, your wishes, that you want to have children. And therefore, all you do is you remember your tsar. Even you will give up hope. I'm better than 10 children. I am better than 10 children. And I will always be there constantly by your side. The whole time. I will never leave you. I will never ever stop governing for you. But please, let's carry on our special relationship. Now, that is, that is Rabotai, the, the uh, uh, what's it called, the objective of the beginning of this story. Now, let's try to analyze it. Let's try to analyze what we've seen at the moment. One of the most moving chapters which exist in the whole of the Tanakh, husband, wife, relationships what it means never gets angry never gets upset he's upset deep down but towards Hana he will always be positive he will always show his love Hana have it's not at Hana I have I have is constant he ten will always give he's never considered ishto. She is, what we say in Hebrew, ahuvato, his love. 
it's constant love or what we say beloved never ends and this concept takes place and that's what shmuel saw that's how he describes now if we compare the two we'll now see a certain criticism of yaakov avinu this in actual fact this relationship you said you loved Chana. How do you relate to her, Rachel, in this way? Therefore, we have sort of a comparison of two stories, two husbands. Each one, in a way, is normal. But there is the Ratsui, and there is the Matsui. The Matsui is Yaakov Ovinu. That's what usually happens. The Ratsui is Elkanah. That's what should be. Yaakov Avinu, what you say in Hebrew, Al Tiet Sodek Yechacham. Don't be correct, be wise. Yaakov Avinu was correct. I can't be in the hands of Akurush Borhu. But he wasn't a Chacham in that respect. Kana was a Chacham. He was wise. He showed. Chana, let's see what can happen. Now let's go back to the texts. Okay. Now comes the next star. Hazal have a different insight or an additional insight. Amar Rabbi Levi, line number 100. Amar Rabbi Levi. Hello, hello, Ani, Ino Katuv Khan. It says, Anochi of Lach. Why does he mean say, Halo Anit of Lach? What does it mean, Anochi? Ella, Halo Anochi. He parenthesizes it. Anochi. Who is really there? Kodesh Borchu is there. Anochi is there. Kodesh Borchu is there. The same Anochi who said, Anochi Hashem Echa. He is more than ten children. Not I, El Kana, but the Anochi. Anochi is better than ten children. Now let's try to understand this Midrash. One of the most famous statements on this subject was written by Rabbi Yitzchak Arama. Rabbi Yitzchak Arama was one of the great Jewish commentators in the 14 in the 1400s wrote a commentary which is very very philosophic philosophical and very influenced by the Rambam etc etc it's a very hard book this keta this part portion is also brought in the Chama Leibovich on the parsha of Ayetze the story of Yaakov Avinu she doesn't do the comparison between between Yaakov and Shmuel, like we've done, like Elkanah. Let's lay, read what Yakedat Yitzchak says. After that, I will state, give you a statement which Nechama Leibovich, Lea Shalom, said about this. Ikra Adam Shem Ishto Chava. Adam Arishon called his wife Chava. Arishona at the beginning, Shera'a Ota, the first time he saw her, Etsem Meatsamav, one of his bones, Basar Libsaro, Gazar Aleha, gave her the ability or the possibility, Lishtatef Shlemuta Enoshi Echad Adam, Kara Ota Isha. Older, I am an ish. I am an ish. I am an ish and nisha. We are both equal. Omnam, Khar Shera'a, Mashinim Shachlo, Chevrata. After we saw what happened, she, in inverted commas, okay, which shouldn't be because Damarishon never took on the responsibility himself. He always blamed it on everybody else. 
Nobody took on responsibility for what they did. Chava doesn't take on responsibility, but she, she says, then Achash gave it to me. And then Adam Arishon said, my wife gave it to me, like the good husband say, ah, oh, it's all my wife's fault. It's all this one's fault and my mother-in-law's fault, etc., etc. That's Adam and Chava. After he saw what happened, Hazar Nakva B'Shem Acher gave her another name, Amore Ala Nikviyut Levad, which only spoke about gender, feminist, feminism. Uchava. I mean, she had two names, one which was equal. Then came the second name. The second name is the fact that she can have children. Chava Em Kol Chai. The main objective of a woman is not to be equal to him, but to have children. As far as their spiritual uplifting, everything is up to the husband. She is the one to have children, and I'm the one to be go up to heaven. These two names need to be there. The woman has two objectives in her life. She can be just like her husband. Like him. He has the ability to understand, to have skill, to become wise. A woman could be great. There's no stopping of a woman becoming a Talmud Chochem, just like a man. Nothing can stop her. She is like a man, says that Kegat also giving birth. She is somebody a man lives with. Right. When a woman can't have children, the fact that she can't have children doesn't mean anything. It means a man, a woman who can't have children can be the same as a man. In actual fact, what? She become the greatest Talmud Chochum in the world. She doesn't, if she doesn't have children, she can become like that. And that's what Rachel said, that's what Yaakov said. Chara Af Yaakov, line number 118. But Al Ken, three lines from the end. Al Ken Chara Af Yaakov Barachel Kshamra Havali Banim. Ligorba, he got angry with her. Ula Skila Baze, Ainyana Nichbad. Who? She ain't a meta. She's not dying. In meta, what did she say? If I don't have children, I'm going to die. No, Mapi Tom says Yaakov. Lefiati Chaleta Mishutaf, because we both got the same thing. Basher Manami Mena Pribaten. The fact that Kodesh Baruch Hu you children, then you're like me. We'll both go and sit and learn together in yeshiva. That is what Yakeidat Yitzchak says. So what does Yaakov say to her? Come on, let's go and learn together, Gomorrah. Let's do Daf Yoimi together. The fact that Kodesh Baruch Hu didn't allow you to give birth doesn't mean anything. What's the difference between Yaakov and Rachel, Yaakov and Elkanah? Yaakov does it in an angry way. Achat Elokim Ani. Am I greater? Am I better instead of Akurush Baruch Hu? Let's go and sit and learn. What does Elkanah say? He says to her, Hello Anochi, I am with you. And also Akurush Baruch Hu is with you. I'm better than 10 children. And Akurush Baruch Hu with you is better than 10 children. That's what Elkanah says. It says it in the most beautiful way. The word anochi has got two meanings. It's me as a husband, and the anochi of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And together, we are better than 10 children. Right. 
That's, that is the explanation of the sentence. Story goes. Story goes. Sorry, one minute. Story goes, one day, Hanan Porat, great Hanan Porat, was one of the great pupils of Nechama Leibovitch, was talking to her. And she tells him this explanation of the Akedat Yitzchak. Hanan Porat said to her, Look what you've done all your life. Look at all the Torah you, Nechama, have given to the world. What did she answer him? She answered him, all the Torah is not equal to feeling your own child. All the Torah which I have given to the world is still not equal the feeling of your child. Now let's look how Rav Soloveitchik explains this sentence. Rav Soloveitchik says in one of his fascinating books, Adamu Beito, he says the following, Hu el kana lo hevin la la'ahava He never felt the yearning of love to the self-sacrifice, the Mesiros Nefesh, which is above human, nobody, no husband, never understand what it means to be a woman, to be a mother. No husband will ever understand that, says Rav Soloveitchi. Never. Men not feel the same for their children as a mother. He carries on and says, Rat hila, only in a community, but shlosha chaverim, where there are three people, magiim nisuin limlo shlimusham. As marriage get up into its fulfilled achievement. Only when you have at least three people is then considered a family. A husband, a wife, and a child. A mishpacha is only the family. Until you have children, you're a husband and wife. You're never a father and mother. Father and mother is a different level a husband and wife. And that's what Rav Soloveitchik says. Rak b'kihila bat shlosha chaverim magiim anisuim limlo mimusham. Rak in a community which is made up of three people, at least. Wife, husband, and child. That is marriage. Until then, everything might be good. That el not understand. That's what Nechama answered. Hanan Porat alav Shalom. Nechama alav Shalom answered Hanan Porat. With all the Torah which I'm given, I never felt a child, my own child. So therefore, let's what the, what I'm trying to explain to you is the difference between El Kana and Yaakov. Kana feels for Hana. Am I not able to feel what Rav Soloveitchik is putting in? Because man is from Mars and women are from Venus. But he tries to understand that. He tries to empathize and he shows, listen, the two of us in the world can be your best companion better than 10 children. Me and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Let's learn Daf Yoimi every day. Let's do this every day. Let's do that every day. Let's become most holy husband and wife. But it doesn't help Hannah. Hannah knows it. Hannah knows that's true. But it doesn't help her. And therefore, she in actual fact 
those davens. Um, I want to carry on one more stage. I'm jumping over the Natsiv because, okay, let's do the Natsiv, the Hamek Davar, because this is, this is in actual fact, this explanation of the Natsiv, which you're going to learn now, is an introduction to how Chana eventually follows what Elkanah actually says. What's the sentence? Achel says, I'm going to die. Isha, I'm a vakeshet banim, woman who wants children, amimu mevakeshet ta'anuk. She wants to be happy. Teva isha, it's the nature of a woman, gadel ulishtashea banim. Have children, play with them, be able to be a mother to children. Pa'amim, and sometimes, she wants to have children because she can rely on them at the end of her days. But to understand this in a deeper way, okay, in the olden days, I was once, I can tell you something which taught me a lot. It was once, my wife and I were once traveling in England and we went to Stratford on Avon. And we went to, we heard a tour of Stratford and Avon, which, the, which was the birthplace of Shakespeare. Um, we had a great madricha. She took us all around. And then she took us to the house of where Shakespeare lived, was born. She says to us the following. She says to us, uh, tell me, how do you think Shakespeare's mother was and she died. And he says to us, she was 33. Okay. And then she says to us, according to the books which they have in England, majority of women in that period all passed away between 30 and 40. Okay. Often their husbands were a lot older, a lot older. Older men married younger women. And often women were left as widows because also the first wife died, the second wife died, the third wife died, etc., etc., etc. Therefore, often women were scared. Women got married at a young age. And often their husbands could have been 10, 15 years older than them. Second shidduch, third shidduch. And therefore they were worried, who's going to look after us when we get older? And therefore she wants children in order that they should look after when she's older. And that's one of the other reasons which is brought in the Gemara, which says women wanted somebody to rely on. Now, carries on the Natsiv in line 129 and he says, Baton person who wants children because of the fact that they are they want to have children in order to be a mother etc etc says that sometimes her husband can fill in that space she's got a husband who stat who what's it called who in actual fact appreciates her, lives with her properly, then she can be happy. That's what Elkanah says to her. Lama tifki? Lo anochi tov lach mi asara banim. All right? I'm better than 10 children. Avalim toenet mishum chuto liyada ene tzabapiyus. You can never calm a woman down when he says, what's going to happen when I get older? Hainu. And that's what happens. Shekafza chana. Makes, an, makes a vow. Chana says, makes a neder. If I have a child, then what? Then I promise to give him to Akurush Borhu. She was a bit upset. Shemar Eshet. 
all what Hana wants to have a child is because she wants to have children to have be able to bring them up. Says Hana, I don't want it. I want a child in order that my child will be somebody who will lead from Israel like my husband. That's why she makes that neder. She makes that neder, she makes that vow because she wants her husband to realize that the true meaning of a child is not only for a woman to have children or to worry what's going to be at the end of the day. But what? To be able that my children will be leaders of Klal Yisrael. So Hana silently says that. That's what she says in her prayer. Let's go now to carry on the chapter. Matidor neder, matomar. She makes a neder out and she says, Hashem tzvakot, imra'o tir'e. You will see doni amatecha, the affliction of your maidservant. Uzhar tani, you will remember me. And you won't forget your maidservant. All his life. He will be a Nazir. Hana promises that what? That if I have a child, he will be given to Akush Borcho and he will be a Nazir. Now let's take this sentence how Hana relates herself to Akush Borcho. How many times she mentioned the word Amatecha? She feels that in the eyes of Hana, she's his wife. Isha. What is her relationship to Akush Borcho? The relationship to HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Amatecha. I'm like your maidservant. I'm subservient to you. Okay? There is another Anochi above me. There's not Anochi only of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, of my husband. But there's another Anochi. There's HaKadosh Baruch Hu. She makes this neder. Right? And the Mephoshim asks about this. How was it possible that she made neder, okay? Where was her husband in all this? Where was her husband in all this? Now let's go to the final section of Elkanah. Vayal ha'ish Elkanah. This is after she's given birth. Ha'ish, the man. Kol beito. Lizboach l'ashem et zevach hayamim v'et nivyo. Lo alata, and Hana doesn't go up. He amra le isha. She says to whom? Her husband. Lo le baala le isha. To her husband. Adi gamel anar until I finish feeding him. Aviotiv and I will bring him and he read from Hashem. Hashav sham adolam. Yomer la el kana isha. Her husband. She considers him Isha, and she is Isha. Asiato Beinaich, Shvi Ad Gomlech. Sit at home until you finished feeding him. Ach, Yakum Hashem et Varo. Hashem will establish his word. But Eshev Ha'isha, Teniket Bena Ad Gomla Otta. Now, What's quite amazing is, take note, sentence Chaf Aleph, Vayal Ha'ish. Sentence Chaf Gimel, Vateshev Ha'isha. We now become man and woman. The fact that now Hana has a child, creates them not as names anymore, but a man and woman. They have community. They have a child. And that's what Rav Soloveitchik says. Hana now feels that she's a woman. She 
looked at a child. Let's learn the Malbim on this, these three sentences. Ayal Haish. What does it mean? Haish, the man. Gamata, even now. Hagam Shera'u Hanes. Even though everybody saw the miracle. Shena'asa le'el kana. Only one person, Elkanah doesn't manage to convince other people. Let's go all up together and to thank Hashem. Look what a miracle has done to me. No, the only one who's willing to go up is Elkanah. Zevach, doesn't mention anything about bowing down. He carries Tachavaya, his main, because it's written before Vaishtachave, Aya Babut fil al Khana. Lo Trachata, he doesn't need it. Khana, lo alata. Khana doesn't go up. Agam, even though the fact, Shigaya derech hayoledet, la lot batsma ulavi kinehem, she should have gone up and brought up her offerings as a woman who's given. Also, in order to bring what we call the korban yoledet, the korban of a woman who's given birth. Cholzot, lo alata. She doesn't want to go up. Why not? She thinks, shebichlal nidra, her vow includes, says that the first time, shebepam arishin hashet eviu, the first time she has to go, she tviyo v'yireh p'nei Hashem lo yamush misham, v'lo yashuv od lo beito. She's scared that if part of the vow is to bring, a, bring him to, the, to Shiloh, to Shmuel, then she'll have to leave him there. And therefore she says, wait. Let's wait a bit longer. Let me feed him and then I will bring him to Hashem. This vow, Her husband doesn't know about this vow. Reshut, he had the power, laferota ata b'yom shomo. He could have annulled his wife's vow that day. Bifrat b'neder kazeh sheloi ala koach al zeh b'lo they both should have done it together. Aval hu, he, elkana, kishmoa ata et nidra, when he heard a vow, he kimota. He said, okay. You do what you want to do. That is true love, Rabotai. True love in where there's an appreciation between the husband and wife. She knows, he knows why Chana really wanted children. Anochi. Anochi. I'm like 10 children. Kodesh Bochu for Chana was like worth of 10 children. She was willing to give up his life. She gave up her, Shmuel's life all for the sake of a Kodesh Bochu. So here we see what a true marriage is. Shmuel sees a family where there is a husband who never stops loving his wife. He never feels anything. He feels everything what she feels. Eventually, his prayers and her prayers get together, and they have the first son, who was called Shmuel. Okay, she feels that Shaalti me Hashem. Eventually, as the Chazal say, she has more children. That is Elkana. Elkana, in actual fact, has two missions: to teach us the message of. How to improve Klal Yisrael, but above all, how to be a true husband. How to be a true husband. And a true husband means empathizing, feeling, giving, loving, all the expressions which we use nowadays, which have become a cliche, which hardly ever exists. That is what I wanted to teach you guys today. I want you to learn with you this brilliant 
introduction to the book of Shmuel. How Shmuel looks at his parents. How Shmuel feels for his parents. And uh, now you can ask questions, whatever you want. Okay. Anybody want me? Okay. Please send me the t recording of this uh, share, please. Yeah. I've got the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Questions, problems. All the old husbands can say what they like now. All the ones with hundreds of years of experience together. Right. Course, this is all from the perspective of Shmuel. Who this is, is Shmuel's perspective, correct. Who was writing all of this about his mother. His mother and father, yeah. 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 So. A what? Whatever. Listen, Anshay Knesset Agdola decided to put this in the Tanakh. Yeah, well. Okay. Okay. If they decided to put this in the Tanakh, it means to say that they felt that is the absolute truth. And it's a lesson for all of us. It never stops. Yeah. Harold. If only all like children felt that Harold, you're hinting as a male chauvinist. No, no. If only all children felt that way about their parents. Okay, great. I agree. Uh, okay, then. I didn't know that was, I thought that was your perspective. Okay. I didn't realize that was your children's perspective. Yeah. Or children's perspective. Yeah. Yes. Any other questions or comments? Yeah. Okay, guys. Yes. Okay. Keep well, everybody. I'll see you in a few weeks' time. Next okay. time is on Pnina, Emir Tashem. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.